I see a totally different world. I don't see any fixed capital in that way. I see distributed corporations starting, grabbing whoever is the best around the world for the price range, whether that person's a programmer in Kenya, whether it's someone who's a management consultant in the US, whether it's an accountant in India, whether it's a lawyer in Uzbekistan, and putting them together for each individual project, having them interact. We're a few years away from having things like virtual smart boardrooms all over the place. If you've got enough money at the moment, you can actually have a virtual smart boardroom where there's a holographic image projected of other people. It's not just in um, sci-fi movies. If you have $15 million, you can set yourself up one yourself. You can hire them for $50,000 a session. And like everything that is a luxury today, it will be commonplace in the future. Indoor plumbing was considered a luxury in Victorian England. Toilets were considered a plumbing in 20, uh, 1920s Australia. Yet, who would go to a house with an outhouse anymore? It's not that long ago, really. When it's not long ago at all. In some ways, yes, it's exponential and the same exponential growth rate happens to be there. And the same curve would have actually been there in 1920 as we see now. Except what we see now is more people, more innovation and whatever else. And if we look at it in a nonlinear uh, time series function, then we haven't really changed. What we've done is moved further along that curve. And if we expand that curve out, it looks exactly the same as it did 100 years ago. And in 100 years, we'll expand that out again and it will look the same. That's a fun thing with exponential graphs. And then we'll go, but we're in the fastest time ever. And in 10 years' time, we'll say, we're in the fastest time ever. And 10 years after that, we'll be the fastest time ever. And this is what's great. It will be mind-blowing. The things that are going to hit us now will be the same as when my grandparents were around. My grandfather was the first person to get a Marconi wireless um, uh, sort of, well, thesis, masters, whatever else, here in Australia. That was a long time ago. And uh, I still haven't actually seen his, um, uh, anything he wrote because it's still classified for some reason. Uh, it was to do with microwave and some of his things went into over the horizon because um, he was in, in the army and etc. So worked on over the horizon radar and all that stuff way back. So I still haven't seen a copy of it. We have closed source and we have open source right at the moment. Where we're going with the entire Bitcoin micropayment scheme is not going to be either of those. What we're going to do is really have a system that will allow you to sell at different rates, different prices, open up the time. Really, the market is wet dream, so to speak, where you can sell to students and executives at different prices and capture every segment and still get what people are actually willing to pay. Capture that free rider and get some money out of them. Capture the other person and then fund things based on what they're really worth to the individual. It comes down to enabling a marketplace for everything. And a marketplace that isn't individual pricing. If I'm willing to buy a Coke can for $2 because I'm in a hurry, and the next guy will wait and pay a dollar because I can queue jump, then that'll happen. And maybe we profit share. Maybe that guy, uh, the Coke is actually sold for $1.50, but because I jump in there, I pay $2, the store owner gets both sold, and the other person doesn't walk off frustrated because they get paid 50 cents of mine for me to jump in the queue. All of those things will occur. And I know the arguments are rich bastards in their Ferrari will jump on the road and be able to get to work quicker. Well, why is that a problem? If you think about it for a moment, if you're the person going to work and someone in a real hurry comes past you and you get a little thing saying, if you move over, you get $50. Well, okay, I'm earning $40 an hour to be at work. Um, I'll 
sit in traffic for a little bit longer and listen to my MP3s or whatever we have in the future. And um, he's just paid me a little bit extra. Why is that a problem? I think agreement is a, is a big issue here. If we're in agreement and we have peer-to-peer -peer negotiations and we're okay, it's our business, then it's nobody else's business. And Exactly. And we should be able to negotiate anything that doesn't hurt others and move into a world that it really doesn't matter. That's what we're, we're really looking at with the, the whole revolution of Bitcoin. In the 70s and 80s, we had IPv4, and back then most people didn't know what it was, and um, everyone in the 80s thought I was rather weird because I actually had a computer, and I actually played with these things, and uh, because of my grandfather I had a connection um, through um, a number of different links. And yeah, I'm hearing some kind of curiosity could have stemmed from that relationship with your grandfather. My grandfather, um, well, he was, um, uh, well, involved with um, Melbourne IT, involved with other things way back when. And um, I mean, I actually had my first email address in 1979 before people understood that there was this thing called the internet. And of course, we were talking um, um, old craze and things like that, copying, doing file to file copies for email, not anything like we have now where it's sent over, over the network, but it's interesting. Yeah. And it's not even the start of it. I mean, part of what we want to do with the idea of a, a peer bank is also have a social banking function. And so change the nature of how people interact, buy, sell, merge things like eBay, merge things like PayPal, merge all of that, and just have it available all the time. I mean, everyone says, what is the value of Bitcoin? I'll throw that on its head. What is the value of fiat? Fiat is a new invention. Money was invented by people, not governments. No government ever invented money. Money was always something that came from merchants, from traders, from tradesmen. It was a way of measuring. Barter is inefficient. It's a way of holding something there. And governments supplanted it and took it as a control measure. At the end of the day, fiat, well, why is that good? What is the value of a dollar? If I go and I take my dollar to Treasury, I have a promise that they will replace it with a dollar. And they won't even do that now, actually. I can't actually go anymore to Treasury, not even in the US, and hand them a dollar and get a shiny new um, dollar coin. Used to be able to, can't even do that now. We still, in Australia, from the 50s, have a law on the books that's dormant at the moment that says the government can confiscate gold or precious bullion at will. So we're seeing those sort of similar laws in the, the notion of confiscating bank accounts that haven't been used in three years. So grandma hasn't checked her um, savings account, therefore the government gets to take it. Or one of the things being touted at the moment is uh, if people with excess superannuation, you die and you still got money in your super, well, why don't we take that and use it to fund people who have less money in their super? The perverse effects of that sort of economic policy mean that why would I save? We've seen savings go down, not because the arguments we see all the time in, in government, but because there's no incentive to save anymore. It's devaluating. It's devalued, yeah. If I'm going to save all my life and if I fail, um, well, I'm no different, or if I succeed, I'm no different. Why should, I, why should I bother? And with inflation, I can save and have half a million dollars in super, and what, that'll buy me a Ford? And then I'll pay tax on it anyway, so. Yeah. Tell us about the socks. Well, I, I can play the role of, um, of CEO to an extent. I can wear the, the, the three-piece suit and I can have the, um, um, the pressed shirt and everything like that, but I'm still a geek and I'm still all the rest. I still write code, I still um, pull apart assembly or C, and quite frankly, there's that little bit of rebellion in me that just but has to be there. The feet, that's your stand, the stand for humanity, not mm -hmm. changing.
Is there anything else you want to say? That's it, I think. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.